the Uranus armor. It will be good if you can snipe with your eye in the sky like the deity, but it is not nice if it does trigger your PTSD of the original Gundam Belt Divers. It does trigger mine because Hiroto didn't fire upon Riku and shoot the double sky down, so this thing is going away forever. This is the end of the review. Clearly, I was just messing with you guys. What is going on guys, mg 5 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Hybrid Eurovan Gundam from Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise. Now, in this video, I'm going to be covering the significant differences between the Core Gundam 2 and the other Core Gundams. So, articulation is exactly the same, Core Change Mechanic is almost the same, I will cover the different steps later on, but for now, let's take a look at the Core Gundam 2 first. So, Core Gundam 2, Beam Saber, Core Spray Gun, everything is basically the same. So, for the stickers on the Core Gundam 2, of course you do have the eyes and the sensors on the front and back of the head, but you do also get one more for on the Core Defensor. So, not a lot of stickers. Now, I really like the sharper and sleeker looks of the Core Gundam 2 and the Beam Sabers. Now, the head, basically the Kyrios face, put it on here and has like a fiercer look, extended shoulder armors, more detailed upper arms, white chest with the clear pieces, and a slimmer waist, more angular waist, extensions on the front skirts, no back skirts, and of course you do have the core defensor on the back with the blade beam sabers on the backpack, slightly taller and slightly thicker thigh armor, and extended feet. So. In, all in all, the Core Gundam 2 does sport a way sleeker look, and I absolutely love it. Now, I'm still a little bit biased towards the twin face vents on the original Core Gundam, but the Kyrios face is actually growing on me. Now, everything else is the same, so I will not talk about that. But, first of all, the beam sabers are a little bit of a point of attention, because look at this. The hole is a plus sign. Now looking at the posters, I actually thought that they would do what they did with the Reborns Gundam, provided us with a circle and a dash, basically a middle C shape, so as to plug on circular beams and also flat beams. But no, they made a plus sign so you can only put in flat beams, however the breakthrough is you can put the bleed beams in different orientations, that's basically it. Or alternatively, if you store it, first of all you can have the blade facing front, or you can have the blades facing towards the side. So basically you have four directional choices for mounting on the beam savers. I do not want to risk breaking the pegs right now, so I really don't want to push it in, but yeah, it's just different aesthetic choices. Now, the kit does come with four beams, two short ones for the core beam savers, and two long ones for when it is docked with any sort of armor. So, nothing has changed there. So the only proper unique accessory is the core defensor on the back. Now, as you can see right here, it is being mounted onto the back. And yeah, you can see the glue over here because it doesn't mount well onto the backpack. Like, it sometimes just falls off, but I do not know if it is on this kit in particular because by this time, I would have already bought the three remaining Eurovan Gundams that I need for custom and to prepare for the other two armors. So, I will have to test it out on those kits, but as for this one right here, it doesn't really mount well onto the backpack. So, it's, nah, it's not really too good functioning as a backpack. And, yeah, it does have moving parts. So, the connector over here, just have, just click into three points. So, there's the straight position and, of course, yeah, the nose cone. It doesn't sit inside of the pegs at all. So, the straight position actually renders it a little bit floppy. And then there's the other position. When it's bent 45 degrees to the back and and finally you have the nigh right angle over here so the connector you can actually adjust it into three different positions but i prefer to store it on the back with the second position over here but just for the sake of it i'm going to put it back to the first position because this can also function as a shield with the handle over here that can swivel up and down and then it can also swivel downwards like so and of course you do have the peg over here just so you can plug it onto the hard points of the planet armors. And yeah, this thing right here loves to fall off, so stiffen up these pegs as well. And of course you can just flip it up to form the core defensor shield. This is what it will look like. 
So you can allow the core Gundam 2 to hold it in the hand just like so. I like it towards the side because it just doesn't get in the way as much. Now this thing does have weight issues. First of all, they loosen the bulge into the hands. So the, sh the hands really cannot hold up the shields. Whether or not it is the split hands or the non-split hands, they just can't hold the shield up. But there is another problem because if you want it to stand on the ground with the shield, yeah, it will cause some weight issues. It will cause the Gundam to tilt towards the side unless you position the feet in a specific way or if you utilize the provided stand. So that's basically all, all the unique accessories for the Core Gundam 2. Now before I transform it into the Core Flyer, let's compare it to two of the many many Core Gundams that I have. So here is the anime version of the Core Gundam. So nothing really changed. It is a slight bit taller, like a hair taller than the original Core Gundam, if you look at it closely. So, yeah, the longer thighs are not just for show. And I'm gonna bring in Alice. So Alice is still taller, I think? Yeah, it is still uh, quite a bit taller than Hiroto's Core Gundams, despite the height gain. Yes, the Core Gundam 2 actually hit puberty, but he's not just as tall. He can't be just as tall as his enemies. So this basically wraps it up for the Core Gundam 2 in Mobile Suit Mode. So without further ado, let's transform this thing into the Core Flyer Mode. It's basically what you've basically seen from the shield on face transformations. Rotate the head 180 degrees, fold the arms, fold the thighs this time instead of the waist, and then rotate the feet and then just make everything flush. Now, And then also flip the beam sabers up. Do the same thing for the other side, and just try your best to streamline everything. Now, here is the core Gundam 2 prepared, and let's prepare the weapon. So, for the core defensor, you do not need to do anything, but just basically flip the nose cone up. And then, this hole connects into the handle of the core spray gun, but be careful, because I already stressed the handle of the core spray gun, I'm worried that it may break. So, be careful, especially when you're taking the core spray gun out of the shield when transforming it back. So basically what you want to do now is to flip the handle upwards like so. And then you feed the beam sabers through the indents of the shield and then connect the shield into the backpack while you collapse the beam sabers onto the wings. So this is the core flyer mode. And I have to say it is one of the better looking shield on face transformations in my opinion because you can basically just hide the entire Gundam from up top of course if you look at it from the bottom it's still the core Gundam just looking into his shield in misery for not defeating the Alice core Gundam on its own but if you look at it from the top it does look pretty damn awesome the wings over here do give it the effect and the more, rather concealed feet from the top does give it a very good illusion Overall, this is a very well implemented mechanic and does give the Core Gundam 2 its individuality. So, I will leave it at that. So, that's gonna cover it all for the Core Gundam 2. Next up, we move on to the Uranus Armor. So, the Uranus Armor does look pretty good on its own. Now, I am a little bit on the fence about the outspread legs and the lack of tail over here. Because every single other armor does have the legs straight. So it adds more length, but this thing has more width. Now the, now the legs actually act as kind of wings to make it resemble more of like a jet kind of thing. But I'm not really too sure about the design itself. Now with, with no doubt this armor carrier does come with a few issues, specifically with the Uranus armor thus far. For example, the stock over here, it does love to fall off from its peg, so just stiffen up the peg that is inside of the stock. And the problem over here with the shoulder armor, I will mention it more in detail when I dock this thing with the core gun too. So yeah, in short, loose joints that cause the sensor base to just gravitate. But all in all, this thing, eh, I'm not really too like big of a fan of the looks but I am not against it it still looks pretty damn good now people have been thinking whether or not this thing is just like twice as large as the original armors the answer is no because it is basically just the widespread bulky legs that gave us the illusion that this thing is kind of twice as large as the original armors because when you compare it like centrally you can see 
kind of see that it's basically the legs that's just providing the width so it is not really that large and the other question if you're asking is whether or not these armors are cross compatible with each other's shuttles um the answer is it depends on which armor i haven't tested on all yet but the mars armor is definitely impossible if you want to put the uh Want to put the blades where they are because there are no circular pegs for the the heat rev sword to be mounted onto it the venus armor is plausible but the legs do get in the way with the hover units so it's plausible but a little bit forceful haven't tried it out on the earth mercury and jupiter armor yet and i have not tried swapping the uranus armor over to the old shuttles so that has yet to be determined but yeah cross compatibility is really uh it's really on the nose for now and by the way, this base actually provides us with ports to store the hands, the extra hands. So you do have two sets of holding hands, one set which can be split, one set which cannot be split. And of course, we do have one of these left open hands. There's no right one for now, but maybe the Saturn or the Neptune armor will provide that option for us. But for now, we have three hands stored under it, so we do not have to lose anything. And we have the Uranus armor stored right here on the very refreshing looking carrier. So for comparisons with the Uranus armor, first of all here we bring the Earth armor in again. And then let's bring in the Mars armor. And then the Venus armor. And then the Mercury armor. And then finally, the Jupiter armor. So, that wraps it up for the Uranus armor. And without further ado, let's dock the Uranus armor onto the core Gundam 2. Now with the common steps out of the way, let's move on to the unique steps. First of all, flip the beam sabers down, and then flip the sensor bits up. And since this thing doesn't have its own backpack extension, it just uses the core defensor. Now just adjust the connector one click, so that it's angled and of course that thing just wants to fall off all the goddamn time plug it back on and just what i like to do is to plug it on with the beam sabers going over the defensor just like so and then since it has a three millimeter hole plug on the third sensor bit onto the connector right here so for the core spray gun extension this time yeah shove the barrel into the core spray gun just like so but then the stock just goes over the hole where it was stored onto the armor. So here you have the beam shoot rifle U7. So now you will have the Eurovan Gundam. So the Eurovan Gundam does look pretty nice. I love the bulk that the armor gives it. And I just really like the quad V fin and the color scheme and all kinds of stuff. It just works. Like this thing, of course, it just screams H1 full glancer because it does have the purplish navy blue for the armor. And you do have the gigantic plasma diver missile like core defensor on the back and of course the sensor bits do look like the shield dots rifles of the h1 full glancer and all in all this thing just looks pretty damn good and i really just like how the back section is over here do not only serve as hidden compartments for the feet but it does also serve as thrusters according to the detail right here which is pretty damn nice of course, you can go without the gigantic butt shield if you do not like it because the rectangle on the back does fit 3mm pegs really, really well. So you can go without the butt shield. But as for me, I'm going for anime accuracy. So the butt shield has to be included. Now for extra stickers, of course, you do have the metallic green sensors on the sensor bits. And of course, we do have the ones on the leg sensor bits, which are really, really nice. I never expected them to add the leg sensor bits at all. And they actually went full out with full color separation and a full on sticker. Color separation that is so good that they actually fed the thrusters on the side panels over here through the white piece instead of wanting us to paint in the black ourselves or use a sticker, which is really, really nice. So overall, the Eurovan Gundam is pretty damn good just on its own. Now the accessories, let's talk about what is on the body first. So of course we do have the sensor bits mounted onto the back and the shoulders. Now the ones on the shoulders has a hinge so you can flip them out but the hinge is extremely loose 
So they really just like to pop back into the track and flop back to the position they were in. So I wouldn't recommend using this, but it's a pretty good feature when you tighten it up. Now, of course, you can send these sensor bits out and plug onto the many hardpoints of the Eurovan Gundam. So you can plug them onto the gauntlets and of course you can send them out and unless you have an action base 5 which gives you the hold to hold adapter you will not be able to send them out so you just plug the Eurovan's sensor bits onto the action base just like so but then again you have to have an action base 5 in order to have those adapters next up of course we are going to talk about the leg sensor units so yeah as you have seen they can pop out but unfortunately you cannot feed a wire through it you may be able to feed a wire into the storage peg over here but not here because this is a three millimeter hole so it is just way too large to feed a wire through it maybe you can grab some adapters uh, but i'm not really too sure about that but this three millimeter hole does allow you to send the leg sensor units out wireless so if you have another action base, you can just send them out, just like so. And of course, the only unique handheld accessory, the Beam Shoot Rifle U7. I'm not really too big of a fan of the defense plate over here, but it does look really, really good. I really like the aesthetic of it. It does have a green sticker for the scope. And the rifle actually has hard points on both sides, so you can plug on the defense plate on the left or on the right, which means you can make the Eurovan Gundam a lefty or a righty. And of course, it does have support handles on either side of the rifles, further exemplifying that you can put this on either hand. And of course, you do have the extendable barrel to switch it between rifle mode and sniper mode, which is pretty nice. How do you put it in hand? Just slide it over. Now, these hard points, of course, you can plug on the sensor bits, but it's mainly for plugging on the defense plate to add further security on top of the stock wrapping around the core's arm. So long peg plugs onto the harpoon on the rifle, short plugs onto the gauntlet. Now the rifle is not going anywhere, not at all. But be careful and be wary when you're taking it off, just so you do not snap any of the pegs on the defense plate. Now the defense plate does have a hard point on its own. So you can plug on, there goes everything, but it does give me a free sensor bit to plug onto the sides of the rifle to enhance the sensors and of course you can plug on the core defensor by plugging in this peg into the hard point and letting it hold it by the handle just like the earth three gundam's shield now it does cause a lot of weight issues but you can just tighten up the joints and solve the problem now the other thing is it does limit its range of motion with all of the wings on the shield but you can just use the shield in the eurovan gundam form so it's all right so that is going to be all the accessories for the Eurovan Gundam. So for comparisons, I am going to be showing a slideshow because I can't be bothered to bring in every single one in the same screen because the same screen cannot accommodate so many of the planetary core Gundams. And of course, I'm going to be throwing in some extras in the end. So there is going to be the V2 Gundam 2, Jupiter Gundam 2, Eurovan Gundam 1, and Alice Eurovan Gundam. So which one of these is your favorite? And basically it displayed, yes, cross compatibility. So this wraps it up for the Eurovan Gundam review. What do I think of this kit? Well, let's get the issues out of the way first. First of all, I really do not like the joints in the shoulder armor. They love to flip back and forth on their own, so definitely stiffen those joints up. Second of all, the core defensor. Yeah, it doesn't really plug onto the backpack at all, so stiffen that peg up. And the nose cone doesn't like to sit in the slots at all, so stiffen those pegs up as well. But other than that, this thing is definitely a very good kit. It does implement some mechanics that I didn't expect them to implement, like the extendable barrel and also the leg sensor bits. Those I never expected them to actually implement into the kit, yet they did it. Well done. And other things, they are, they are generally the same as the other core Gundams, the core change mechanic, but I really do like the uh, transformation into the core flyer, so that's a plus as well. I really do like the look of the Uranus armor onto the Core Gundam 2. The Core Gundam 2 itself does look good, so all in all, this is a very welcome addition and warrants itself a 7.5 out of 10. Now, it doesn't top the Jupiter for the 8 
out of 10 that it has because of the issues but then again stiffen those joints up and you will be grand so i will recommend this thing to you guys definitely go ahead and pick it up plus it is relatively cheap so why not it's a bang for your buck and extra set of armor extra core gundam nobody will say no so that's it for me thank you all so much for watching this video if you did like it please be sure to drop a like comments and also subscribe for more gunplay reviews gunplay news and other kind of stuff subscribe to the featured channels on my channel page if you haven't and i'll see you all in the next video peace out guys bye bye